Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Deep Tech Studio. This decade is poised to be monumental for technology. Indian startups have hit a century with unicorns and so unicorns are lining up for the leap. And the IT sector is embracing new tech with a lot of vigor and enthusiasm. But how will deep tech fare? And how can it be used to solve social, economic and environment, environmental issues? Also, how does India's deep tech ecosystem compare to the rest of the world? To speak about this and more, we have IIT's Mr. Shekhar Sanyal, who's a country head and director on this episode, and he'll speak about IIT's role in the development of the deep tech ecosystem. Welcome, Shekhar. Nice to have you on board. Thank you so much. and very happy to be here. Shekhar, break down the role of IIT India and the areas of involvement across emerging technologies and sectors. So the IIT, uh, as some of you might know, is a professional society for engineers. We are 150 year old organization. We are headquartered out of the UK and uh, the IIT India office has been around for the last 16 years or 17 years. Uh, we are a volunteer led member led organization and uh, we work with engineers and technicians, technologists across the world uh, in building uh, making things better for society using engineering as a platform. In India, we have been over the last six or seven years working around specific areas of technology. Uh, we run three think, think tanks. One of them is around future technologies. Uh, one of them is around future of mobility. And the third one is around future of work, all of which are linked around technology enabling, uh, making citizens and people's lives better. So that's, uh, that's what we do in, in, in our future technologies uh, think tank. We have got a large number of senior professionals volunteering for us and working around creating roadmaps, which are technology roadmaps, which are feasible, looking at the impact that is required for the growth of the country. Understood, Shekhar. So for the coming decade, where do you see the technology ecosystem heading and what milestones are you excited to watch out for? So it's a, it's a very exciting time for uh, the technology roadmap. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depends on which way you look at it, uh, the change which COVID or the pandemic has brought forward has helped in accelerating technology in a significantly large way. Uh, we did a future of work uh, uh, event uh, in 2019, October, where we released a playbook from the future of work. And we did a set of predictions which we thought would take, would take about five to seven years for uh, them to happen. And when we looked at it again in October 2020, after a year, we saw that 93% of the things that we had talked about were already in motion because of the acceleration of uh, technology and the new things which came through, which was accelerated primarily due to the pandemic, but it was helpful that change has accelerated. And that acceleration is still going on a lot of new deep tech work is happening. A uh, lot of work is happening in India. Uh, R&D is happening. A lot of new technology is coming through in India and it's starting to get deployed worldwide. Understood, Shekhar. Now you spoke about deep tech. Uh, I'd like to specifically ask, how do you think emerging deep tech uh, technologies like 5G artificial intelligence or say AR uh, spoken in the same realm as metaverse can be used to solve some of the burning issues in terms of economy or in terms of environment or social issues? See, one of the biggest things that deep tech will get used for is citizen convenience. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know across the world, uh, the government in any place is the largest consumer and the largest buyer of technology. And what they use this technology is to make their citizens' lives better. So whether it's 5G, uh, whether it's uh, XR, uh, using XR to reach to those parts of the world or uh, which is not accessible, especially in India because of remote locations, whether it's healthcare, whether it's uh, uh, manufacturing, whether it's looking at installations which are not reachable in normal places, or uh, I talk about healthcare. Healthcare is significantly important for us because affordable healthcare is something that India has been trying to work on for a long period of time. And these technologies will go a long way in helping that happen. Uh, you know that 70% of our medical uh, personnel or medical uh, representatives are 
based out of urban centers, but 70% of India is made up of the rural part of the villages. Now, how do we make sure that the professionals who are sitting in the urban area are able to service the people who are in rural area? Deep tech, 5G, XR, uh, all this will play a huge role in taking affordable healthcare down to the masses. So that's one example of doing that. Uh, additionally, management of uh, set up in the power sector, for example, in the solar plants, which are way outside uh, in, in the hinterlands, how do we make sure that the uh, maintenance of those, and breakdown management of those is done? Uh, drones, uh, 5G again, which is a backbone, uh, augmented reality to make sure that people who are uh, on the ground who might not have complete understanding, but using uh, augmented reality uh, accessories, they can actually connect with people who are sitting at, uh, at maybe a bigger location and able to guide them. All these are things which are already happening, right? And they will continue to grow and become bigger. Uh, citizen conveniences like last mile delivery of citizen, uh, citizen uh, facilities, whether it's through the government or through private enterprise, is becoming more and more popular. Uh, you know, during the pandemic, most of us got everything that we wanted through an e-commerce uh, setup. And we were able to do through that because of the great leaps that technology has taken forward and it will continue. To so interesting use cases um, you mentioned, and most of it alludes to the connectivity issues or the divide that exists between the rural and uh, urban digital divide, as we call it, uh, that seems to have been accelerated also to some extent by the pandemic. Yes, deep tech will help cover that. But when it comes to the market that deep tech operates in, how does India compare vis-a-vis -vis to the world markets, say the US or uh, the or France in Europe or say Israel, those are established markets. How does India compare to them? See, every new technology in India, there is a long burn in new technology adoption in India because of the sheer size, because of the divide between the urban and the rural parts, the volumes that are coming from the rural, from the rural part of India while uh, the adoption is higher in the urban parts. So it's a slow burn. But as you would see, for example, in mobile telephony, we kind of went from looking at uh, analog telephones, which took a huge amount of time for adoption. You, I don't know if people remember, but there used to be waiting lists to get a telephone. And when the telephone used to come, it used to take a place of honor in your drawing room. You kind of, it was kind of a show off thing that you kept the telephone there. From there, we just leapfrog into a point where everybody, the penetration, mobile penetration is extremely high in India. So, it is a slow burn, it starts off slow, it takes much more time than it would take in more established markets. But then there comes an inflection point when it just leaps strong and goes at a very high scale. And what helps is the sheer size of consumers that we have. So once it takes that jump, then it just proliferates right through. But it's that period of time, that slow burn, which people have to, especially organizations have to contend with, before it starts making that. And a lot of work needs to happen during that time, both by industry as well as government and policy and advisory bodies like us, to make sure that that point of inflection comes closer and closer and stretch out for a very long period of time. I understand, and it also needs a lot of patient capital because the lab to market time is higher and will come to IIT's role, um, especially during that uh, period that seems stagnant, but not necessarily. There's a lot of work happening. But before we go there, I would uh, I would like you to throw some light on if India has to be made the deep tech destination for the world, what are some of the challenges that we have to overcome and what are some of the opportunities that we need to cash in? So if you look at deep tech destination, you'll have to define it in two different ways. One is whether deep tech work is happening here in creating the technology. And the, one is the adoption of the deep tech technology amongst people. I think we will be much faster in terms of creating deep tech. There is a significant amount of research and development work which is happening in India. And the, uh, there are lots of places in India which are doing already work around creating deep tech. 
and we will continue to do so. We will obviously have a march over a lot of other countries in terms of the creation of deep technology. Adoption, as I said, is an amalgamation of policies, of uh, economy, of industry, how, how the next five to 10 years work out for India as an economy, how the growth happens. And it's a mixture of various things. If things become favorable, then in the next four to five years, we can see uh, adoption happening quite significantly. But as I said, the variables are much higher in that than creation. Definitely India can become a hub of creation of deep tech. It is already on its way. And that's something that we should bet on. Understood. Uh, now, how do you uh, imagine or envision the collaboration to move forward, say, between private entities or academia or policymakers and the government? See, uh, I'll give you a use case that we have done around IoT. So uh, the IET started its IoT panel in 2016-15 uh, when IoT was still in its nascent stage. People mm -hmm. were still grappling with the thought process of IoT. And we worked in creating a platform which got industry, academia, and the government together on a regular basis uh, to talk about IoT, to figure out what the roadmap should be in various sectors. And we were quite successful over a period of six years. We were able to bring IoT into the mainstream of conversation, both in the government as well as industry. So we were able to build roadmaps which made feasible. In fact, the M2M uh, roadmap of the government of India has inputs from the IIT's IoT panel. Uh, currently, most recently, the blockchain uh, policy or the drones policy has had our inputs. So that helps in bringing the conversation to the fore for helping the government understand how the regulatory framework should support the growth of these things. These are a few of the things that we need to do. But what is important is to get everybody on the same table and to have those conversations together, industry as one single body, the academia to pitch into that, and the policymakers to come onto that table to listen uh, to the industry and academia without the worry of commercialization. One of the biggest challenges the government has is that every time they listen to, uh, uh, to the industry, they worry that at the end of it, there is going to be or a service which is a commercial, of commercial nature which will get pushed in. Bodies like us, which are neutral in nature, are able to take that uh, agenda out of the equation and therefore the conversation is much uh, better. The acceptance of the ideas is much better by the government. And that's what bodies like the IT will need to do continuously, not just the IT, many more bodies will have to pitch in to make those conversations more stronger and in the forefront. Understood. So Yes, and thank you for uh, telling our audience about your role in, in the policy and how your inputs are really shaping the deep tech ecosystem. But Shekhar, if you could also throw some light on how technology needs to be promoted or a narrative needs to be built for it to be used in the social setting or for social issues or say for sustainability issues. How do you come in in this and what is your role in it? So, uh... As we said, one of the key uh, focus of the IET, we have, our mission statement, our vision statement says that we are working to engineer a better world, mm -hmm. which means that everything that we do is focused around making lives better around society. And all that activity that we do is open source, which means that it's available for anybody to use. Uh, we do white papers, we do advisories to the government, we do projects which are working on. I'll give you an example of a current project that we are working on, which is a disease surveillance project. So what we are doing is we are using publicly available data and overlaying uh, AI uh, engine over that to understand uh, the data and predict potential outbreak of specific diseases that we have identified in geographic areas. Now, what it does is that it is, it, if it, once a pi this pilot is going on, once a pilot is successful, we can we have an algorithm which can actually be used to predict outbreak of epidemics. Now we plan, once we have that uh, algorithm, we plan to hand it over to the government of India for them to start using it for looking at potential epidemics and thereby building the healthcare and the other ancillary systems to manage those epidemics or stop or prevent them. 
Now, these are things which are of societal, which will impact society in a strong way, which will probably help us, uh, you know, manage. We've all seen how the second wave actually tore through the country uh, and uh, each one of us have got affected, but these are surveillance, uh, this, this kind of pilot projects would probably help reduce the impact of that. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that we are currently doing, and there are many more such things happening. I can't talk about all of them right now, but uh, we are always on the lookout or in, in the process of finding such kind of socially impactful projects, which uses technology to make lives better. Understood, and yes. That's the that's the motto we stand where technology has to change lives and lead it in a better way. Otherwise, there's no point of it. So yeah, exactly. thank you. Thank you, Shekhar. Thank you for enlightening the audience about the role of deep tech ecosystem in the country, how there are various use cases uh, for say sustainability or for societal issues or for how it can lead to economic growth and where we stand in terms of market, what more work needs to be done, and also for telling us about. IT's role in it. Thank you for this conversation. It was great having you here. Thank you so much. I was very happy to be here. Thank you very much.